last time we spoke, you said that Trey should be the third quarterback on the team. But there was something you didn't quite understand about the like That's right. the treatment of the third quarterback this year. Explain. Okay. I thought you could they would keep, they would keep either two or three quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. If they kept three, I thought they were all equal. They were on an equal footing. My judgment would be if they were to keep three, and it would still would be this. Brock Purdy first, no questions asked. Um, I would have put Sam Donald second simply because he has more experience, and I would have put Trey Lance third. But if they were only keeping two quarterbacks, bear with me here, I would have had Brock Purdy first, Trey Lance, Trey Lance second, because Trey Lance has much more potential than Sam Darnold. I think in training camp, they were roughly equal. Maybe one had an edge, maybe one the other. They were pretty much equal. But in the long run, Trey Lance is way more of a talent than Sam Darnold. So if it was only two, I would have kept those two and Darnold goodbye. And Darnold, okay, but now I did some research about you could designate a quarterback. I didn't understand it. And what it means is you name a one and a backup, and then the third guy is designated, and it means he only comes in if the other two guys are at death's door and can't mm-hmm. play. Plus, if one of them can come back, he has to come off the field. So he's in sort of a no man's land. He's almost on the practice squad, and it's like he's on the junior varsity. What a slap in the face to Trey Lance, especially the way he played in the last game. Yeah. Um If you were going to do that, you make Sam Darnold the number three because he would be happy to be number three. Trey Lance would not be. And what Kyle did is he lost this kid. Crushed him. I think I crushed him. I I think my my guess again, I never met Trey Lance. My guess is he hates Kyle's guts because he sees how he's handled them. But this is the this is kicking him in the groin. And um. Uh, I think Darnold, who has no future uh, except as a backup in the league, would have accepted the number three under these conditions, the designated quarterback. I think this is the worst case of a of a coach misjudging his talent and crushing a talent. And Iggy, we know coaches. They don't act like that. Mm-mm. No, I, they don't act I like mean, that. Coaches, teachers, your job is not to break a student down. Your no. job is not to find the worst in that student and kill their confidence. Your job is to build them up. Some guys yeah. can do that. I don't think he can do that. I think Robert Sala can do that. I think D'Amico Ryans could do that. I think they demonstrated it. But Kyle is just so relentlessly negative. Um, and, you know, I think Brock Purdy is going to be a victim of that eventually. And so will Sam Darnold. Everyone is. So, so was Jimmy. So was Jimmy. So was Jimmy. We, a lot of people sided with Kyle about the Jimmy thing, including me. But now that he keeps doing it to quarterback after quarterback after quarterback, eventually it's like, nah, man, it's you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's what I feel. Again, Iggy, I've never met the guy. I, um, I have the feeling that he's brutal. Yeah. There are some people who can't praise. Yeah. You and I can praise. Um, and we praise each other. There are some people... Maybe Mike Shanahan didn't praise him. Who the hell knows? But there are only people who can say no, who can say not good enough, Mm -hmm. um, who can make you feel bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I have the feeling he's the type of teacher, because he's a teacher, who Mm -hmm. can make only make you feel inadequate. Right. You know, when I when I was at Stanford and I did my Ph.D., uh, my advisor was this genius from England. That's how he made me feel. Yeah. And. After I was done at Stanford and got my doctorate, I, I would see him and we'd be friendly, but I ha- privately held it against him. Uh, he could have, what I call it, it teaching is it's 90% psychological hand holding. I don't believe Kyle can hold the hand. No. Does he, he want, no one wants to. No, no wants to. I, it's not a teacher. No. See, he's a dictator. He runs this organization. And I think he's a micromanager. And I think the way he handles everything from the quarterback position to the littlest parts of the organization we don't even see is he brings someone in, makes them feel special that he picked them, and then just ruins them for not doing every little thing the way he wants it. 
Yeah. You know, it's like you brought me in. I thought you trusted me to do this job. No, you got to do it exactly how I want it to be done. And it's every single spot in the organization. I think his dad was the same way in Denver. I think maybe if Kyle Shanahan were just an offensive coordinator or just a head coach, maybe he'd be successful. But he is the dictator of the 49ers, and he has way too much power. And look what he did with these first-round draft picks. He threw them away. Should he be in charge of draft picks and personnel and trades and stuff? I don't think so, but he is. Iggy, I would uh, say someone like him is a destroyer of souls. Ooh. A destroyer what of souls. What do you mean? Well, you have a young guy, Trey Lance, who from you tell me he's a very nice person. Yeah. And he, he got hurt and he worked very hard. All yeah. of yeah. that smiling, smiling, uh, going, yeah. going along with the program. I Life think his soul, I yeah. think his soul is crushed today. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't deserve it. He didn't no. deserve to have his soul crushed. And if he had a different coach, I'll even say if he had Mariucci, right. if he had Mariucci, I think he'd feel better about himself and yeah. maybe he'd be a better player. Yeah. How can you play well when you're miserable and you have no confidence? And how? every throw, every throw is a referendum on how good or bad you are. Correct. Every, every throw you, only get seven throws. you only get seven throws in a day. Hey, go, go knock yeah. it out, Trey. Impress me. Yeah. Impress me. Yeah. 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 And here's the funny thing, Iggy. We're positing that Kyle Shanahan, I'm calling him a destroyer of souls, uh, hopelessly negative, uh, hypercritical of others, but not of himself. No. That's the pisser. That's what we call it in Brooklyn. That's the pisser of it. This Mm -hmm. guy doesn't look in the mirror because you and I have a lot of things to say about what he's not good at. Could Mm -hmm. could we take turns? Sure. Uh, Okay. Um, I would say he's not good in the draft at evaluating quarterbacks. I don't think he's good at evaluating anyone. I mean, he, he seems like he's in charge of the third round. They always miss. I mean, the kicker sucks. Is, I mean, isn't good right now. The tight end they took isn't good right now. Whenever they drafted Jalen Hurd, their draft record is abysmal, with, except for like five or six guys. Okay. So uh, he's, not, he's, not good. he's not good at drafting. Now, when he gets a quarterback, okay? I don't think he has the slightest idea what to do with a quarterback. I used to see Bill Walsh teaching Joe Montana and teaching oh, yeah. Steve Young. Teaching. I used to see him working on footwork with them. I used to see that. Do you ever see this guy teaching a quarterback? He doesn't teach anyone, He does not, not, let alone quarterback. He doesn't teach anyone. And he played wide receiver. Like He doesn't ever go to the wide receiver and say, this is exactly how I want you to run the route. Never. He has no. a, a football in his hand and he's throwing it to himself. And there's this like one five minute period where the defense comes together and practices their different coverages. The zone drops, the man drops, and they need a, 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 someone to throw passes to them so they can intercept him. That's what Kyle does. He lives for that moment in practice. Other so, than that, he's watching or calling plays. Yeah. So he's not a teacher. No. A no. coach is, a, a, coach is yeah. a teacher. I'll tell yeah. you what he is. He's a guy who loves to draw up plays. He's, yes. he's the nerd who sits home and draws things. He likes to yeah. draw up plays, and he'll say to himself, oh, this will work. Uh, th- yeah. This will work. But he doesn't yeah. say, can my quarterback do this? No. Um, is my quarterback suitable for this play? His attitude right. is, I'm going to draw up these five plays or 15 plays or 20 plays, and they better do it or they suck. It's yeah. not like, is there a confluence between what I'm thinking and what they can do? But a real coach, Bill yeah. Walsh, yeah. would do that. And so this guy is not a teacher. He's a play drawer upper. Yeah. And the hell with the consequences. That yeah. bothers me. Now, yeah. I have a question, Niggy. Sure. We're talking a lot now, not about the number one, the number two. We're talking about the poor number three quarterback. And this is the big let me, this is the biggest news on the Niners right now, in spite of what Kyle wants. And this is big news. It was even on ESPN, uh, their website. Why is the country talking about this story on the Niners more than any other story? I mean, they got Bosa is holding out. This right. is a bigger story than Bosa. Right. Iggy, why is that? Because it's unprecedented. We've never seen anything like it, and it feels like really wrong it feels like it's almost beyond sports like they the 49ers acquired this young man and are like methodically ruining any chance he has to have success in his profession for no good reason 
he, he's okay. not a criminal. He didn't get in trouble. He's just getting buried alive. And the whole the whole country, I mean, everyone knows Jamarcus Russell got a chance. Everyone knows every Ryan Leaf got a chance. Four games? And you're burying him behind not just Brock Purdy, but Sam Darnold, too, who the whole country knows. Everyone knows Sam Darnold. He's been around forever. This is totally, it feels gratuitous. It feels personal. It feels petty. It feels mean. Okay. So what we're now beyond sports into the yeah. realm of the moral, into morality. Yes. And it seems what they're doing is not fair play, yep. not good sportsmanship, unethical. It's unethical. That's unethical. what that's the word. It's unethical for a team to do this to a young player. Unethical. unethical. Yeah. And what it Malpractice. feels like now, it feels like Kyle covering up his own deficiencies by scapegoating this young man. Yeah. And I think there's a yeah. sigh, a gulp of revulsion mm -hmm. across the sports fandom in America. Right. A, a, a right. gulp of revulsion at what they've done. Right. There was always a fantasy that like, hey, Trey's still on the team. Kyle still says nice things about him. He's younger than Brock. He could get his opportunity, do well, and there could be a happy ending with Trey Lance and the 49ers. But they just sort of closed the book on that yesterday. And now everyone's left with the wreckage of this trade. Like, OK, you really threw three first round picks away so you could have Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold. Like, how do we feel about that? No, that's not OK. You don't get to do that because you say you have the real deal, Brock Holyfield. Like, no, 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 no. Even with Brock Purdy, you didn't do right by Trey Lance, and that's not okay. NFL teams aren't allowed to do things like that. And any other team that did this to a quarterback like Trey Lance, someone would get fired. Doesn't matter if they had success. Someone would have to be held accountable uh, for this. And I don't know that the Yorks have it in them to hold anyone accountable, but we'll see how the season goes. Well, um, does Jed York have any sense, more sense of morality or responsibility than his head coach? I don't know. He Does Jed York have any power anymore, or is it his parents? I don't even no, know. No, no. I see. Who has the power? Who yeah. knows? Um, know. I've never been. I've never been wild about that family. Uh, and for what it's worth, um, Bill Walsh couldn't stand John York, and mm -hmm. used to call me all the time and complain about his behavior, about John, not not Jed, but about John York's behavior all the time. He used to call. I'd be. I, I'd answer the phone. He'd say, um, "Hi, Lowell. It's Bill. Hi, Bill." And I remember one time he said he did it again, and I knew what he was talking about. John York. He screwed him in another way, and he just had to uh, tell me about that. So and wasn't he sort of I like cheap? Like wasn't that sort of well, the nature of the issue? Part of it, cheapness. Well, that's what that Bill felt. He was very cheap. Yeah. Um, anyway, but I think it's very interesting, Iggy, that we're saying this is really a national story, and yeah. it's a national story of collective outrage. Yeah. That this is not, and listen, these are this is not, this is not the Cincinnati Reds. This is the 49ers. This is Carmen said, win with class. This, yeah. Is this class? Is this class? Dad, there's one more layer that we got to acknowledge. It's a black quarterback. There's not that many of them. Yeah, And I think for a lot of people, a lot of people see a black quarterback, black people, a lot of people say, I'm rooting for that guy. There aren't that yes. many of them. I'd like to see him get a chance. He was the number three pick in the draft. And for him in particular to not get a fair chance, I think that really upsets people. And again, transcends sports. It's like, what is happening in San Francisco? Okay. Uh, this is a very, I'm glad you brought this up. I want to tiptoe through this carefully. My guess is Kyle is not basing this on color. That's my guess. But the way it appears, especially to black people, is here we go again. Here we, we go got, again. Here and we go. this guy did it to he didn't do it to he has a history. Remember RG three ten years ago. Okay. He, he has a history has of a history. A history of ruining quarterbacks who happen also to be who black. Who happen to be black he, and run around. Yes. But so I, I, think, I don't it's tough. Let me tough. let me finish. I don't want to call him a racist. And I'm I don't want to say this Okay, and I don't want to say this is racially motivated, I'm but it's a that. very bad look. It's a very bad look, and I could see why this would alienate African American Forty Nine er fans. Absolutely, and not, why he would anger a lot of fans that are sympathetic yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. I think there's a lot of Niner fans who felt Colin Kaepernick got ran out of town unfairly. And then they just sh shut up about it for eight years. And now I think a lot of these old feelings are coming up. Like, wait, here we go again with the 49ers. What is going on? You got rid of Very Colin Kaepernick. Fine. For Brian Hoyer. And that was Kyle. 
who did that. You got rid of Colin Kaepernick for Brian Hoyer, who was objectively worse, lost all your games and moved on to CJ Beathard objectively. And now it's like, okay, man, Trey Lance isn't as good as Brock Purdy. We hear you. We believe you. Sam Darnold. We all know who Sam Darnold is. And you won't even stand there on a Tuesday and say it with pride. Like you have to leak it and then duck it like nice, man. Cool. Cool. I can see why people are upset. And Iggy, when you did the show yesterday with uh, Jesse Naylor, wow, people, very few people defended Kyle. It was a show of outrage. It uh, it went on for about an hour and a half. You had more than 200 paid comments. 242. It was amazing. And people were pissed. Outraged. Yeah. And I just kept being like, Kyle, these are your fans. These are your fans. (laughs) 